Antichrist! <laughs> it is Sunday, February 10th, 2019. This is the Bulldog Unchained Podcast. I'm your host, the King of Villains, Bulldog Malenko, along with Tucker, Mr. DJ Security. Hi. <laughs> Nubs is slow. It's your boy, boy. And we got Josh McNinch back in the studio with us. What up, man? Uh, you already know what's up. <laughs> so. <laughs> So Tucker <clears throat> invites us to uh, go, <laughs> go to this bar, the Hornets Nest, last night, and uh, here in a little bit in the show, we're, we're gonna have a real interesting story for you. Yeah, it's gonna be a fucking <laughs> few minute tangent. <laughs> <laughs> he had fun, you know. He did. I told him flat out. I was like, that. I was like, this entire experience has given you at least another <laughs> fifteen minutes to build your set on. I would have rather my grandpa be inside me. Just go back there last night. <laughs> I'd rather have another fifteen minutes of that <laughs> to put in a set. Mm. So what's been going on, Tuck? Working. Hell you saw it. You were at the yep. shop yesterday. I came to the shop yesterday. Did shirts and then worked on my truck. Yep. I had to help him with his headlights. That's Changing his headlights in his truck. Ooh. Really they need to make it for fat people. Hands it was, it was behind bullshit. It's mm. fucking horse shit. <laughs> but hey, I'd rather do it myself than pay somebody else fucking hundred dollars to do it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. What you been up to, Nubs? Working. <laughs> bowling alley. Oh yeah. Hey, by the way, I got some complaints at the bowling alley. Fuck that. Dry has that lane has been dry as fuck for like two weeks. Which lane? I need some more outside grease. <laughs> <laughs> Which lane is it? One through six. All right, I'm lane seven. <laughs> it's not me. I'm seven through twelve. By the way, I'm pretty sure that uh, Dina was at Hornet's Nest last night. Probably was, gang. There was a few Dinas there. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Dina convention. They have a fucking tramp stamp on the back of a flying eagle. <laughs> she might have. There, there was one. Was she, fucking she Dina. Had all this <laughs> That's why I laughed because he said tramp stamp. Yep. I mentioned a tramp stamp. <laughs> this woman was like, I'm so glad I never got a tramp stamp. <laughs> like, you still make mistakes. Was it the one with the sparkly jeans? I don't fucking know. It was one female that was sitting close to me with the dude. Oh, the, the dude with the beard. Sitting, oh, it's Michael. Yeah, yeah. and his girl. <laughs> uh, they they thought he was pretty funny, but they were the only two that could really hear him other than the table oh, I, behind I couldn't, us. I couldn't hear shit. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh my God! He was just. <laughs> Needless to say, Mr. McDinch did not have did not have an enjoyable time last night. <laughs> no. But uh, so first, I gotta cover this. So Friday night, <clears throat> I go out with uh, my buddy Kirk. We end up at Lamasco, and there's this band there called Steady Flow. They are from Peoria, Illinois. Hmm. They are fucking bad ass the best way that i can describe this is they are a combination <clears throat> of like metal blues and funk fusion that sounds hot. oh dude uh, so it's almost like a metal version of daft punk yeah kind of like some of the That's things they do it it's like. it, it's cool as shit like they've got they got this big dude which not your area josh I listened to it. Yeah, I played right. it for him in the car. He was like, that's pretty fucking badass. So uh, they got a big dude, which made me happy. But he plays saxophone, and he is amazing. And then the uh, the lead singer, and like he plays guitar, and his brother plays bass. Well, the dude that plays guitar, his name's Tanner, and his brother's name's Kai. Tanner is only 24 years old, and this motherfucker's a beast. And then uh, I remember that their keyboardist, his name was Tavis, and I feel I feel like hell, man. I cannot remember their drummer's name, but he was cool as shit. Mm. And <clears throat> like they were all just really good dudes. And I was talking to their like manager, 
and he hooked me up with the full like their newest album and I'm going to play this song on the show here <clears throat> with full permission by the way so fuck you YouTube don't be trying to demonetize my shit and fucking you're playing copyrighted material no bitch no, I got 76 cents he's gonna get you all these views I got ex yeah exactly I need it <laughs> <laughs> I got expressed. Oh, Bulldog's not definitely not getting monetized. <laughs> no, no, probably not ever. We're never, we're never <laughs> <gonna> get <more. laughs> we never get paid for this. Yeah, never yeah. ever. That's yeah, what it seems word like. From our non-existent <laughs> sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> That's real. Everybody's like, "Oh, I'd love to advertise on a podcast." What do you talk about? Not shit that you want your name attached to? No. <laughs> Ever? <clears throat> the very first person was like, oh, hey, your name's Josh, aren't you? Want you on the podcast? He's like, yeah, I know about pedals. Like, yeah, I'm a dude that got raped by my grandpa. And that was the That literally shit, happened man. to Hornets. That's like, it's like one of the people there's like, yeah, man, Tucker got me listening to your show, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes, are you Josh? And he goes, yeah, I'm the one that got raped by my grandpa. And he goes, man. That's <laughs> like, it on our table? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably it Elliot. That's no, who, no, it wasn't Elliot. It was a guy sitting next to you on the left. Yeah, the dude sitting next to Elliot at the end. Oh, Wes. Yeah. I don't know. It, oh, that, my God. That, that, so that kind funny. of fucking set the tone for how the rest of the night was going to be. <laughs> that look on their faces. <laughs> it was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> you have the one got raped by my grandpa. Oh, yeah. I heard that. He didn't want to shake my hand after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was been happy you made it out of that shit. <laughs> It's good to see you still alive, man. Right. Is your butthole intact? <laughs> my asshole has not been that nervous since fucking my grandpa and goddamn Posyville. Like, and a stump, I would say. Yeah, the stump too, but I, I'd rather would have taken the stump than that shit. I'd rather have a fucking evil dead orgy than go back to the fucking hornet's nest. I don't know, man. Both of them seem about the same. Now watch, man. The fucking hornet's nest is going to be the first place that wants to fucking like, advertise on your podcast. Like, fuck that, dude. I fucking love it. I would love it. I'll pimp the fuck out of them. That'd be fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just not on I'll that make line. you my personal liaison no, for the Hornets. No, yeah, I'll be like, hey, Josh, we need you to go out there nope. and uh, do a live remote. Nope. <laughs> we need some public radio on that motherfucker. No. Nope. <laughs> you'll, hear, you'll hear me, Josh, on the corner of fair sucking a dick before I go back out there. <laughs> we can film that. Yes. Yeah. Fuck we it. can post that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, Bounce this line. band, this band. So, these dudes, again, they're called Steady Flow. <laughs> This song that I'm going to play today is called Eleven, and I'm half tempted to be like, hey, you guys just need to uh, go ahead and give me this song to be my new intro, like my new theme for the show. Like, I like it that much. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to go ahead and take, take a little quick break. I'm going to play the song Holy for you guys. First one in forever. Well, I know, right? First break since ever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to play this song. And then uh, we're going to come back. We're, we're going to talk a little bit more about these guys. And then we're going to get into the fun of last night. <laughs> and get McNinch's first-hand account of the events as they unfolded. <laughs> All right. Again, this is Steady Flow with 11. If you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, the and then amps go up to 10. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? It's not 10. You see, most most blokes are going to be playing at 10. You're on 10 here, all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One loud. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder?
the other way, <laughs> fuck asshole. Oh my god! I couldn't, I couldn't go right there. as we're getting ready to come back out of that song, god Tucker, man. you just got to blow ass right at McNinch. <laughs> fuck That's you. fucking great. So yeah, that song. I, that was the bass to the song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm gonna have you reading a fucking water bottle by the end of this shit again. Dude. So those guys are badass, man. Steady flow. Huge, huge fucking shout out to those guys, and I know that a couple of them subscribe to the show now. And the cool thing is, is they're going to be back hopefully here in a few months. And when they do come back, uh, Tanner and Kai are going to come do the show with us. So I am looking f- the fuck forward to that. But nice. I'm I'm serious. I, I I really think I'm going to hit them up and be like, "Hey, what would you think about me using this song as the new intro to my show?" We're coming up on the three year anniversary. Maybe it's time to switch it, switch it up. Shift it a little bit, you know? I'm preparing myself. <laughs> what? I'm just... I got enough <clears throat> liquor in me right now to where I just don't care. <laughs> I just smell fireball. I just ate McDonald's. <sighs> it doesn't smell any different than McDonald's. <laughs> it's McDonald's recycled. Yeah. Are you recycled okay? McDonald's. I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> you, <laughs> just waiting for it. <laughs> What, you're waiting to catch the drift from Tucker? Yeah, the drift away. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Beach Boys and free my soul. Yeah. And yes, I said Beach Boys. <laughs> Beach <your> Boys. <laughs> God damn it. Better if it would have been a wooden chair. Yeah, that would have been fucking great. I <laughs> <laughs> made new friends. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. We're who you're stuck with. I say I need a new life every time I wake up. I need a new life. Oh, man. God damn it. Big shout out to yeah. fuck you, EPD, and goddamn Tri State Towing, you yeah. fucks. Hold on. So let's tell that story before we get into it. Actually, that's how Elliot knew who you were. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Elliot checks that shit every day. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, is that the dude that just got busted? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So I'm on the way to my friend's house, crossing 41 over the fucking Lloyd Expressway, and a cop gets behind me and decides he wants to fucking light me up for having no goddamn light over my license plate. Now, the car I was driving at the time, which no longer am, thanks again, fuck you, Tri-State, <laughs> EPD, was my uncle's car, and he left it to my mother when he passed away. Well, this motherfucker had a goddamn pharmacy in the fucking car that I did not know of because I don't clean the bitch out. So they pulled me out the fucking car. Well, first and foremost, my car's a piece of shit. So I got scissors stuck in my window so my window doesn't fall down. As the officer's coming up, I'm like trying to pull the scissors out of my fucking window. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I got to get the scissors out of my window so I can get the window down. He's like, just open the door. So I open the door and he's got his hand on his gun. He's like, put the scissors down. I was like, okay. So I like put the scissors down on the fucking, on my chair. And he's like, put them on the floor. I was like, all right, goddamn, I'm about to get shot over a fucking pair of scissors. So I throw them motherfuckers on the floor. I ain't got no license. Time out. If they would have pulled Nubsy over, he had scissors. I would have got like, shot. No, yeah. no, they'd have been like, "Are you uh, are you out doing lawn maintenance?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have got um, shot. Why didn't they ask me? You gonna do lawn maintenance? <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry, man. I'm just all Adderall down here, sh- fucking cutting lawns at nine o'clock at night. That's <laughs> what I do. That's what I do. I try to make sure everybody's even. So they got you out the car. So they get me out of the motherfucking car, and they detain me by putting me in cuffs. So I already know this isn't going fucking good. I call my friend, who I know is going to have bomb money immediately as soon as they pull me over. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to jail less, because they got three fucking cars here. I was like, yeah, I'm fucking going. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So they pull me out. They fucking put me in cuffs. They're like, look, we're just going to put you in the back. I was like, all right, whatever. Okay. We're just going to fucking... They didn't even tell me they was going to search my vehicle. They just threw me in the back of the fucking cop car and started going through my fucking shit and they start pulling out pills like pill bottles and I'm like oh that's, I'm going to jail no fucking if ands or buts about it <laughs> these motherfuckers I wish I would have cleaned my car out but I'm lazy and didn't do it proceed to find 60 bottles of prescription pills <laughs> in the fucking car and like all of them are fucking goddamn expired these motherfuckers are so hard up to hit me with a fucking charge they charge me for fucking muscle relaxers for your bladder this is how hard up goddamn EPD was to get charges on me. <laughs> Expired muscle relaxers for your bladder. I'm in the fucking back of the cop car. They're telling me this shit. I was like, hey, it's hot. I said, yeah, I'm going to jail. I know this. I said, and they're fucking giving me all these fucking prescriptions. I was like, it's all expired. My uncle died like four years ago. You know, fucking all this shit's expired, right? He's like, yeah, man, but we still going to press charges for fucking like... Uh, these fucking Xanax I was like if I'd have known they was in there I would have snorted them a long time ago like I wouldn't have to fucking worry about them like 
I don't give a fucking shit. And they're like, yeah, we got some muscle relaxers. I was like, there's muscle relaxers in there? It's like, yeah, they're for your bladder. But, yeah. I was like, so I'm getting charged with expired pills for muscle relaxers for your bladder. He's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm out there dealing that hard, man. There's so many old people that are going to be pissing themselves tonight because I'm going to fucking jail. <laughs> so I'm pissed off. My life's fucking getting ruined. But I'm doing a fucking set and inviting these cunts out to the fucking damn next show at Jay's. <laughs> and tell them to follow my Facebook page. Facebook.com slash $20 is Always $20. Always promoting. I like it. Yeah, I'm fucking, I was like, fuck it. I mean, I'm going to jail anyway. <laughs> they take me to fucking goddamn jail. I stayed in there for like three fucking hours, and then fucking Jew Boy finally comes and bails me out. Thanks to my friend Les Putty. I love you for bailing me out on that $100 charge. <laughs> so now I got three misdemeanor fucking possession charges that I got to fucking go to fucking court for at the end of the fucking month. And I just realized yesterday, because Jew Boy brought it up, I was like, man, I'm going to get put on fucking piss tests. I got to stop smoking weed for probation now. So <laughs> fuck everything in life. That's why I'm day drinking. <laughs> I'm preparing myself. My liver is about to get hit hard. <laughs> so I think that bringing up Jew Boy might kind of, this is a great segue oh. into last night and the hornet's nest. Oh, God. Why don't you start off this fucking story? Because I got a drink. Because I got a lot to tell. So, Tucker. Oh, I thought he meant you. I didn't, I didn't hear all that. No, 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 no. Like how like how this whole thing came to be. Oh, it's because Elliot and Rachel are actually getting out for the first time right. in forever. So, these are mutual friends. And Tucker and my buddy, uh, he DJs <clears throat> at this little bar called the Hornet's Nest. And he does karaoke and dance music, and so you know I go hang out with Tucker at the uh, at the shirt shop yesterday at the printing shop, and I was like, "What are you getting into tonight?" And he was like, "Oh, we're going out the Hornets Nest," and I was like, "Cool." So <laughs> I post on Facebook, "Hey, which one of you guys? Uh, which of you fuck sticks are gonna go with me tonight to the Hornets Nest?" My retarded ass <laughs> responded, not knowing what I was about to get into. <laughs> So, I go pick up Mr. McNinch here. <laughs> then we make the 20-minute trek out to, I don't know where, is daylight? Is it, that's daylight, isn't it? Earl. Uh, it's not yeah. even Evansville. No, it's Earl. 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 That literal four-way stop is Earl, Indiana. <laughs> Jesus. Earl. If you would have told me I was going to Earl, Indiana, I would have been like, no, I'm good. No, I'm not. I'm staying a In all reality, home. it's McCutcheonville. <laughs> In all early. reality, it's Trump's territory. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't got to worry about getting upper middle class at all out there. <laughs> That's <laughs> where I have fun is what I have to be observing. There was too many goddamn fucking concealed carry white folk there for me to fucking feel. I didn't feel nervous at all. <laughs> well, no, you should because something pops off. They ain't fucking laughing very long. <laughs> oh, man, shit. <laughs> Trust me. You can ask him. I was like, dude, I will fucking pay someone to shoot this motherfucking club up, and I will stand in front of the goddamn shooter. I don't give a fuck. Up, he straight up said, where's a Muslim when you need one? Yeah, that's going to get my fucking crowd really fucking. My fan base is going to jump because of that one. Yeah, that would be Josh. <laughs> it's Josh McNish saying slightly racist shit. But no, we get to this stupid fucking place, and me and this goofy motherfucker walking this goddamn thing looking like fucking okay, the so, yeah. fucking rapists from fucking all no, get out. It wasn't even that. When we walked in there, Tucker. I wish you could have seen the entire room. Yeah. The conversation, like, it literally like, was like the, 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 the crowd ubiqu hushed. The quick, the ubiqu ubiquitous record scratch in a yeah. movie. Yeah. When that some was bad it. motherfuckers <laughs> walk into a bar. <laughs> Everybody, the conversations just went, oh. And everyone is just staring at us. And I'm like, y'all niggas making me nervous, man. Like, what? What is happening? And, and when he says niggas, he means white people because there was not a black motherfucker in there until later. <laughs> this motherfucker, oh my god, we stand in the fucking bar side, right? And like everyone stops and look at us because they got the goddamn please wait to be seated shit. So we go back to the other side to like look and stand there like fucking idiots for a couple of minutes. And finally, the bitch just comes up and instead of saying anything to us, to us, he flips the fucking sign over to like please seat yourself. I'm like, all right, well fucking thank you. <laughs> 
I just didn't want to say nothing to y'all. No. <laughs> no, no. I get it, though. I'm fucking, trust me, I get it. I, I, I see myself in the mirror from occasion. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't fucking trust myself either. I get nervous walking around fucking near a school and I ain't ever done nothing. But I shouldn't be 500 foot within this place. I'm going to get fucked up. <laughs> so we finally go sit and this motherfucker, he knows one person there, I guess. And doesn't even Elliot. doesn't even fucking introduce me to anyone. I go to the fucking bar. He's talking to all these motherfuckers because they're fucking Canadian cunts and they like fucking hockey. <laughs> Fuck hockey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Like I told him, the only go time Leafs go. The only time I've ever watched hockey and it's been interesting is me and my friends were fucked up on edibles and we pretended they were fighting over the last Oreo on Earth. Uh, <laughs> and then it got a little bit interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like Tuck, Tucker's, Tucker's like, right, I'm gonna try that. Tucker's a hockey fan too, so he's sitting there like, he's "All like, right, that's pretty funny. All right, I get all right, it." All right. <laughs> so we gonna sit down, and I think it was your friend Elliot that or whatever. He was like, "Hey, my name, we started talking and shit, and fucking." He was like, "Yeah, my name's Elliot. Is like, aren't you Josh?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm." Is I heard you on the podcast talking about pedal Mississippi. I was like, "Yep, yeah, I'm the dude that got raped by my grandpa." <laughs> So that set, the, that set the fucking tone for the evening because everyone looked at me like, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah, this isn't going to go good. I, I need to stop hanging out with like my comedy buddies because that's all I go out in public with is either my friend from work, Les, and he's fucking, he's white but blacker than hell. Like he drags me out to the fucking busy so Corey. <laughs> yeah. Corey. Nah, even this dude's blacker than Corey. But he drags me out to places like the fucking busybody and shit like that. So I'm used to that kind of fucking thing. I mean, I'm I'm not like I'm, I've been, I've partied in New Orleans on Bourbon Street and shit. So I'm I'm a little bit accustomed to sketchy situations, you know. Like I'm, it doesn't fucking bother me. It's when I get it's in the pl- wheelhouse. It's yeah. It's like when I get in a place where I don't have to worry about getting shot and I have to kind of like I always got to keep my guard up. I think busybody's a little above sketchy. Hey, dude, I fucking <laughs> I would be below. I would, sketchy I, would shit. I would put that above the sketchiness, dude. The str- Strippers there have bullet wounds. That's what I'm saying. Wounds. Man, <laughs> fuck. I like the busy body. That's like it's a Ever little bit sketchy. <laughs> <Do> <laughs> I like the busy body. That's what love like falls the, in love. The lady yeah. I would call sketchy. <laughs> yeah, I offended a black dancer there because I'm not really into black chicks. Like, just it's a preference thing. And they had this really light skinned chick in there one time, the stripper. And she was, oh man, I would. I don't give a fuck. I would have fucked her. And she was like, why you like me? I was like, because you kind of look like a white chick. And then she wouldn't ever talk to me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, it probably wouldn't go over well. Wow! Because <laughs> she looked Jesus. like a white. Well, she was really. I'm sorry, man. Like, this is some fucking Jesus. She should have just lied. Hey, hey, you, you, he's hung out with me in public outside. He knows now that this is 24 oh, fucking it seven. Is, it was not like the commentary. His social commentary was nonstop, rapid fire. I'm at the table. I can't fucking breathe, man. I'm laughing nah, constantly. See, nah, let, let's get back to this bullshit. Because I'm there <laughs> 10 minutes into this shit. And I immediately low. It's not my fucking scene. It's not my fucking scene. So I call my boy fucking Mike Cundiff, a.k.a. Jew Boy. And this motherfucker has done dropped two hits of acid and taking some fucking shrooms. So he doesn't want to get out the fucking house. And I'm like, dude, I got to be high to be here, man. Like, I'm used to hanging out with y'all motherfuckers. You got to come hang out with me for a minute. He's like, well, man, that, so you're at the Hornet's Nest? I was like, yeah. He's like, it's a different crowd out there there i was like it ain't that bad man i'm lying my ass off trying to get a fucking joint delivered (laughs) finally this motherfucker comes out there and smokes me out and we get out the motherfucking car and we go in and (laughs) it's reeking like weed and you would think these fucking upper middle class white people ain't ever smelled weed in their goddamn life because oh you smell good what's that smell i was like it's weed (laughs) and then mike (laughs) Mike goes, oh, it's my erection. I didn't know anyone else could smell it. <laughs> I thought I was going to fucking die. Now, the woman who was probably in her late 30s to early 40s. No, that woman was in her every bit of 40s. 40s, mid yeah. To late 40s. I was trying to give her some credit. I, fucking, I know she ain't ever listening to this shit. No. But anyhow, this woman that had mentioned that comment about what smells so good, and Mike said that, I've never seen somebody look more offended in their <laughs> fucking life she turned on him like immediately <laughs> she was like well i'm not touching that <laughs> fucking walks away i'm like thanks mike you just <clears throat> cock blocked the entire room for me <laughs> so we proceed to be what mike and josh do when we're together and that's <laughs> act fucking stupid and he starts making some jew references and shit like that i was like this is why i fucking <laughs> he, he, and then i was like, He's like, I don't even like to be close to fire. <laughs> yeah, it's just hot as fuck in that goddamn room. There's too many goddamn white people in that motherfucking room. It was hot as fuck. It was fuck. hot as fuck in there. 
I'm fat, so I don't sweat. I just naturally glisten. But I was fucking naturally <laughs> glistening like a motherfucker thanks to that goddamn room. I constantly look like I've been basted. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. It only got fucking worse. It only got worse. I don't even know where I was going. I'm fucking... I hate you so much for bringing me to this fucking place. Oh, my God. But he's making fucking Jew jokes, and you can immediately tell the crowd's getting fucking uncomfortable. So I was like, well, I'm going to fucking break it in there and be like, yeah, this is why I wish motherfucking his family wasn't on Schindler's List. You know? Fuck, they could have got cut out. Yeah. Literally everyone with an earshot is like looking what and is like, happening. Yeah, this this isn't the, the normal white people that come in here. These are the poor white folks, not us upper middle class <laughs> make America great again, motherfuckers. <laughs> so me and Mike go back outside and Mike's tripping. He's like, dude, I can't stay here, man. This ain't for me, man. I'm fucking begging this motherfucker to take me home. <laughs> yes, he, I am like he tried to get you boy to get him the fuck I'm out. I'm like, dude, it's like he please, wouldn't do it. Yeah, I was like, please, he's like, man, I'm too high. I just, I'm driving back to the fucking house and shit like that. And then I go back inside and goddamn Bulldog's nowhere to be fucking found. I guess he's outside with his friend or whatever. So I text his motherfucking ass. I'm like, you better not leave me here, you asshole. I will fucking, I will not be happy at all. I'm like, you a strong letter. <laughs> oh, it's, I'm not used to this, man. I'm used to waste catcher shit. That's strong text. <laughs> there will be major strong words word inside of here. I will send you a six-page strong word of text. No, no, <laughs> I would have fucking, I would have fucking hiked my ass to his house through hypothermia and frostbite freeze and all just to murder his ass for leaving me there. <laughs> Fuck that place. I messaged him back though. I was like, Nah, dude, I'm in the parking lot. Like, who's at the parking back. lot? Yeah, man. When, when they fucking when the DJ comes on and it's motherfucking and I'm not on ecstasy or Molly, I'm like, nah, I don't need to be here. Uh, I don't need to be here when Bad Boy Bill is playing and I'm not high as fuck. I don't need to be here. So I go back inside after Mike fucking leaves and I sit back at the fucking table by myself. Ain't no one talking to me because I've done fucking burned every bridge for these motherfuckers immediately. Talking shit about Jews and fucking marijuana erection dicks. They go hand in hand, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so marijuana just, erection dicks. Yeah, fucking Jesus, man. So I just fucking <gasps> meander outside and smoked a little bit that Mike fucking left me. And I fucking wander back inside and finally fucking bulldogs back in there. But before he goes back in there, like, I'm coming in. I stop. I'm like, dude, this place is too white for me. Like, this is way too fucking white for me. There's way too many white people. There's one black person in the club at this motherfucking time. I say club. It's not a club. It's fucking hornet's nest. <laughs> Fuck that place again. There's one black dude in there, and I sit down, and I just at this point in time, I'm pissed off because Mike's not there. I have no comedian buddies to fucking shoot the shit with. I know I've already scarred poor Tucker for life, so he doesn't want to fucking <laughs> me be anywhere near his ass. He's just looking at a fucking water bottle, pretending there's something to read on there. <laughs> Ingredients, water. <laughs> but this is interesting. <laughs> So I go back in there, and at this point in time, the weed has hit me, so I'm a little bit more social than what I normally am, and by social, I just mean fucking stupid, and I happen to look behind me, and there's this fucking bald-headed Gollum-looking motherfucker. Now, I say bald-headed Gollum, he looks like Gollum if he just got out of St. Jude. Like, Dude. I know who you're talking about. That dude is weird as shit. Oh, he fucking... He goes on like a five minute tirade, like, oh, dude. oh they should have just let that one go. I was like, yeah, like you shouldn't even save that one, man. Fuck his it's precious. Probably, it's probably a good thing you didn't know he's like a Christian. Like, I don't give a flying fuck like, if I knew. It would have been worse. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it would have been way worse. I'm like, man, I would have prayed to God to just kill me. What the fuck? Because <laughs> I don't even believe in God. And I was praying he was going to rapture every one of these motherfucking white people in this goddamn place so y'all could just dis a fucking peer and I can get the hell out of there. I'm fucking asking goddamn Bulldog what time the fucking place closes and shit. And he's like, uh, I don't know, not for a while. I was like, look, dude, I ain't relapsed on heroin in three fucking years. But goddamn, I hope somebody here's got it because I fucking need to get the fuck out of here. So there's one black motherfucking dude in the goddamn club. So there's my saving grace. I know he's got drugs. <laughs> So I go over there and approach the fucking one black guy in the club. Hey, what's up? He's like, what's going on, man? Do I know you? I was like, nah. I was like, you got any drugs, though? <laughs> He's like, what'd you say? I was like, do you have any drugs? He's like, no. I was like, man, you're supposed to, though. And just walked away. <laughs> 
I go sit back down. I'm not happy because at this point in time, we got fucking DJ Stay Puffed over here on the fucking goddamn, on the fucking goddamn records spinning some fucking Spice Girls fucking remix. I'm like, Jesus. And then fucking Bulldog, what the fuck did you karaoke your second song? <laughs> Father figure, George Michael. Dear fucking God, man. I, did, I, I, I had to thank him because I did not know my dick was long enough to fucking scoot between my ass cheeks and tuck itself into my fucking asshole because that's how gay that shit was. <laughs> so I had to thank him for that because I learned something about my fucking self that night. So I just fucking finally just kind of lose my shit for a little bit. I'm like, fuck these white people. I think you literally scarred him for life. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck in here's got a gun? I know you can still carry a motherfucker's got one because I need to borrow it and go to the parking lot and blow my fucking head off. I know of at least five that was in that building. Right? Well, why didn't you point one out to me so I could have ended my shit? All you had to do is ask. Mine was in my fucking oh, pants. Oh, fucking God. <laughs> I'm fucking offering goddamn Bulldog anything to get the fuck out of here, man. It's like 12 o'clock. I'm like, look, dude, you know my fucking $20 is $20 thing, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, fucking free for life, dude. I will blow you on the fucking way to the fucking house, dude. I will you fucking. Got any cheeseburgers? Dude, I, was, I told him, I was like, I will straight. I straight told him, I was like, dude, I will go get every one of my teeth pulled out so you can have gummies for the rest of your life. Just get me the fuck out of this fucking conservative white ass place. I guarantee you, if I would have stood up and fucking shouted, make America great again, half the fucking audience would have came their fucking pants that fucking night. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Oh my god, too many white people. <laughs> Fuck you less, man. You've got me used to way too much sketchy shit. Going to the busybody and getting taken advantage of by strippers and shit. Like I'm I'm too used to that shit. Oh, oh my, my god. This motherfucker's having the greatest fucking time while the fucking two <laughs> oldest, ugliest white bitches are singing Journey. Go fucking figure. <laughs> wow. What a reach. If it wasn't for G Boy, you probably could have gotten laid for you. Dude, I no, I didn't <laughs> want to <laughs> <but, laughs> last time. Because I got laid and I fucking didn't wrap it up. Now I got a kid on the way. And fuck you, Chris Izzy, by the way, for fucking bringing that goddamn shit up. <laughs> Talking about, it. oh, yeah, I found Josh's sexual advice about pulling out. Because usually, like, I fucking I do a joke about how, you know, I play Jenga on the first date. That way they know my pull-out game strong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> And now I got a fucking kid on the way with this chick. And she's like, she's like, you, you ain't going to make jokes about it, are you, on stage? It's like, you goddamn right I am. Like, it's fucking. So that kid's going to come out walking all kinds of fucked up. It's going to spend the first nine months of his life dodging a coat hanger. Like, I just <laughs> fucked up my own joke, okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh my god! I can't even talk. I can't do my pull-out game joke anymore. I know. Like you got fucked up a little bit, man. <laughs> Fucking bitch. I'm just kidding. Just yell at random every day. Say what? Did you yell at the kid random every day? No, Fuck you. It ain't, it ain't, nah, she, she's in Iowa right now. But anytime she's here, that's what I do. Is I just like Fuck you. I play CeeLo Green, but and you I put it on her me? stomach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, you little fuck. <laughs> so finally, thankfully, Bulldog fucking decides. He asked me, he's like, hey, man, you got any money? He's like, you got any cash? I was like, yeah. I was like, how much do you need to get me the fuck home? He's like, we're going to leave. We're going to go to KC. He's like, what? We're going to go from white place to white place? <laughs> Speaking of that, you forgot to pay your tab, jackass. Uh, that just reminded me of it. Because uh-huh. <laughs> I paid it. Because <laughs> oh, I went up to pay mine. Danielle was like, Bulldog left, didn't he? I was like, yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That just reminded me of it when he said that. <laughs> yeah. I had like two or three reds. Oh, yeah, man. Two. My bad. <coughs> oh, shit. So like I feel bucks. like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. And I bought, it, I bought his first round. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you just get the next. And the motherfucker and never got me no alcohol. So I was like, no, nah, fuck you. Yeah, Are you kidding? I paid you back in spades. Man, I just gave you. you. I, I you. Do. I gave you. There it is. <laughs> no. I wouldn't. I gave you your next bit that's going to fucking turn no. you into comedy Listen, gold. anyone that knows me knows my grandpa raped me, and it was very, very <laughs> violent. I would have much rather lived that experience over and fucking over. Like, I worked at Teleservice Direct, and I thought if I died, that's going to be purgatory? No. It's going to be that fucking night with you fucking assholes for the rest of fucking of eternity and that goddamn conservative, upper-middle-class, white fucking hellhole for me. Fuck the hornet's nest. I'm just kidding. If y'all want to give me free food, I love you. <laughs> but fuck all the white people there. And fuck that black guy who didn't have drugs. <laughs> fuck you. God damn it. That's bullshit. I mean, I don't know. I'm not supposed to be stereotyping and all that shit, but come on. 
<laughs> Come on. You that black? Because he was black as fuck <laughs> in a white ass place. Was uh, you supposed to have something? I ain't give a fuck if it's crack, heroin, whatever. I was gonna do anything. <laughs> Did you look for anybody with tattoos? Huh? Somebody with tattoos? I don't. I don't know. You could have had tattoos, drugs. I just was looking for anything at that point. I would have fucking... I don't give a shit, man. You could have fucking been like, hey, I'm going to fart in your mouth and it's going to get you high. At one point in time, I was like, I was like, look, has anyone smoked weed recently? Because I will suck the THC out of your dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of night I had. Everyone just kind of looked at me and just yeah, was like... From NyQuil. That Whew. almost sounds like you're speaking from experience. <laughs> hey, look, <laughs> hey, look, man. You can get it on a piss test. I can get it fucking through the motherfucking piss test. I was like, yeah, man, you can piss in a fucking cup and fill a piss test. I'm sure I can get high off this. <laughs> like, as soon as that splurt happened, I know. I, 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 hey, look, man, I don't just joke about $20 or $20 for no reason. It's real <laughs> life. It's real all shit. It's all protein. It's all good. Yeah. Oh. But now you can't get high from snorting a line of cum. I've tried. <laughs> just, <laughs> I hope fuck? it's yours. <laughs> It wasn't officer. I can see that. Mm. <laughs> it wasn't officer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So we finally leave this stupid fucking place. It's like, yeah, let's go to one. Hey, then there's a 20 minute drive back to civilization. And I'm like, you got to stop. And like at one point, I'm like, you got to stop. I'm a fucking wreck, dude. Because I'm breathe. laughing. Yeah, I'm laughing so goddamn hard because literally this entire 20 fucking minute drive. It's just me. It's him running his mouth about what he just went through. <laughs> like, it's literally, it's like when you hear any kind of trauma victim uh, describing, like, they're a fresh trauma victim, like the trauma just happened recently. It was very So traumatic. you hear the same story over and over and over. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it was like that, except that he was just <laughs> recounting the same thing to me. <laughs> That's the just one time in my life ways. I ever fucking wanted to hitchhike and hope it was a killer that picked me up. <laughs> Like, <laughs> fucking just do it. Oh, you got a knife too? So do I. But fucking just, I ain't even gonna worry about mine. Just kill me. Fuck this place. <laughs> I wanted to go do heroin just so I could fucking forget the goddamn night. <laughs> fucking hell. <sighs> yeah, he was gonna go to Casey's with me. And nah. then literally, we're on the Lloyd. And he's like, Man, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. Like, he's like, no, nah, he's, he's like, like, you can just drop me off here and I'll walk home. I was like, no, nah, See, the, the, the burning point for it is like, <laughs> fuck it, I'll go to KC so I got some more shit to talk about tomorrow on the fucking podcast. But he's like, yeah, you got to pay it again. I was like, I'm not paying to hang out with white people. There's no fucking way. I'm not doing it. Uh-uh. No, uh-uh. there would have been a fucking goddamn fucking payment to get in a hornet's nest. My fat ass would have been out in the car all fucking night. No. It sounds like it would have had a better time. I would have. I just would have jerked off. And <laughs> I'm going to play the stereo. Yeah, off in my car. My heart would go on, and I'm going to jerk off to that. Yeah. That's me. Fucking Canadian bastards in there. Some fucking Indian Canadian motherfucker you met. Oh, I fucking love hockey. I was like, oh, fuck, go the Canadian dudes are cool as fuck. They're Canadians. They're always cool, eh? <laughs> Never met a Canadian before. I had a Canadian friend come down to Mississippi one time, and our fucking healthcare is so shit. This motherfucker was riding a four wheeler, fell off, broke his arm like a compound fracture. You can see the bone sticking out. He's like, I'm not going to the hospital. I'm going to get on a fucking flight and go back to Canada before I go to the hospital. I was like, that should say, my, that should say loads about our healthcare right? system. He's like, I'm just going to go fly with my fucked up ass arm back home before I go to your fucking hospital here. I'm all right. I get it. <laughs> Speaking of Kennedy, you need to watch Letter Kenny. I know. I know me and you talked about it yesterday. Yeah, you Stephen that? was telling me about it, it too. Was it Letter, Letter Kenny? Uh-uh. Yeah, it's on Hulu. What's it about? It's you ever watch Trailer Park Boys? Yeah, it's like a Canadian version, Canadian redneck version of <laughs> yeah. Trailer Park Boys. It's like farm yeah. guys <clears throat> version of Trailer, uh, Trailer Park Boys. I watched Polar though. That was good. Fucking badass, right? That's fucking like good. I haven't watched that. Watch it. That movie's fucking awesome. Yeah. I'm too poor to be watching Netflix or Hulu. Does anyone want to let me parasite their account? <laughs> I, I can't remember my password. I'll let you have it. <laughs> I can't either. I, I actually, uh, I, never I, know I leech off of, uh, like, my my dad and I, we swap, like, I leech off his Netflix account, and he I gave him access to my WWE account. Mm. I can't. <laughs> like, Andy invites me over to watch <clears throat> wrestling all the time. I'm like, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Why? I just don't like wrestling anymore, man. I grew up in the Attitude Era. There ain't nothing ever going to be like that. Oh, everybody says just now. wait. 
I don't give a fuck. Just wait. So I'm sorry. If Stone, if Stone, Elite, baby, it's gonna I don't be. give a fuck. If Stone Cold Steve Austin ain't that out there spraying <clears throat> goddamn Kurt Angle with a fucking beer truck while Kurt Angle's getting a motherfucking award, and then Kurt Angle with a goddamn milk truck, it ain't it ain't the same. Just it ain't. You gotta get back into it. I don't give a fuck. Bubba Bubba Becky Lynch. Bubba Bubba Becky Lynch. It's not Steve Austin. Bubba Bubba Becky Lynch. I can barely afford to get back and forth to work right now. You expect me to fucking get a damn WWE network fucking pass to watch some soap opera shit? That's an American dream right there. Blow shit on money you don't need. <laughs> that's why I just blow it on drugs and alcohol. And WWE. <laughs> nah. That's all three in the same. I can't snort a line in WWE and get high as fuck. Have you been so. to a live show? Yes, a long time ago. Then snort ass there. Nah. Sneak into the back. <laughs> let it get a fart off. Becky Lynch. Right in your face. No. Smell it all day. Then let me smell it off you. And then everything be cold. Let me smell it off you. I right, got a little bit awkward for me, but it's okay. That's that whole podcast. There's so his far. line. That's uh, the line. That's the line. That's the line. <laughs> that's the line. When you smell a fart off my me. Yes. No. That's my line. That's why. I, that's why. I, that's why I draw it. I'll let my grandpa inside me before I let you do that. All right, you can do that at the same time. How's that? <laughs> uh, bring a fuck goddamn tree branch and have an orgy. Fuck it. I got a camera. Let's do this thing. Oh my god, <sighs> we gonna make it. Ain't no. It take you okay. fourteen hours to film it, but you got a camera. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what that song goes by. Yeah, it's good. And don't hit a fucking Y crossroad. Mm. <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> Fuck your driver's side door. The one, like the one, Fuck yeah, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> the one ups, like the up point to the whole fucking like the hornet's nest. Though is the fact that somebody else knows what I'm talking about when I talk about pedal. Because the dude was like, yeah, I fucking know about pedal Mississippi. Yeah, his wife's like, yeah, his wife's just from Hattiesburg. Fucking, like, y'all don't even fucking know. Like, like Hattiesburg is such a rich, white-ass town. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it gets like gym town out of nowhere when you get to pedal. And <laughs> you pedal the fuck out of there. Fucking so in other hilarious. words, you saw McCutcheonville last night. And you know gym town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Same <it's> difference. My, <laughs> my asshole has never been that nervous besides when I was out in Poseyville. And when my grandpa was still alive. Besides that, I was like, man. The only other thing you could do is go hang out on like far west side. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Far you, west side is mad you, rich. You think Horn's Nest was bad? Newburgh. <laughs> yeah. I went out to fucking goddamn the fucking the laser tag shit with Torin and his old lady out in Newburgh, like the the fucking the new theater. Oh, FAE. That's poor Newburgh. <laughs> it's still it's still a lot of white people. I feel like I was the blackest it's motherfucker. Newburgh, that's Trailer Newburgh. Park white people. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but tra- <laughs> dude, Trailer Park Newburgh is richer than us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck, man? Still in the trailer park. Like though. I live. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived up in fucking Evansville for over three and a half years now, and I've never seen a higher concentration of motherfucking juggalos and juggalettes than I've ever fucking in gym town. Than goddamn gym town and the fucking trailer parks around <laughs> here, dude. Like that's what gym stands for. Juggalos is massive. <laughs> <laughs> Real fucking talk. Well played, sir. Real I'm fucking saying. talk. Oh, my, oh God. my God. Jell O's is massive down. That's what Jim Town is. <laughs> I want to throw something every time I hear a motherfucker go whoop whoop. I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm going to throw a fucking fago at your fucking head. That's how I feel about Dilly Dilly. <laughs> that Budweiser shit? I just want to punch someone in my face. Punch someone in your face? I love that Nubsy is the punch, one that caught that. Punch someone in the face. I just want to punch someone in my face. <laughs> punch someone with my face. <laughs> that's like I had that's called head a headbutt. Punch, punch someone, someone in, in my, my face. face. That's my favorite thing about this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> From start to finish. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I put my own ass because I hate you. Yeah, I hate you so much. I'm at a fight club this year. Tyler Durden. <laughs> First rule about Project Mayhem. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm liar, liar. I'm whipping my own ass. Kicking my ass. Kicking your mind. That's how he's gonna get a retirement fund from his shirt place. He's just gonna fucking Tyler Durden that shit and walk out with a fucking bunch of computers. He has to go to the mayor. Look what they did to me. You are the owner of this phone truck. Oh my god. Oh. In my face. <laughs> oh lord yeah dude kept yelling that well there's fucking, your t-shirt <laughs> yeah dude kept yelling at a fucking hornet's nest one night and i just <laughs> god i wanted to hit him <laughs> why, the, why the fuck did we go there then <laughs> that motherfucking ass was like, there was some dude just yelling at randomly but let's go back there <laughs> that's because i know everybody there he's not there anymore <laughs> 
I'll never fucking go you, back to that you, fucking place. You saw the people that I hang out with there. It was that table. And none of those people will ever hang out with me again. <laughs> and, the guy, and the guy that was in the DJ booth. That was a butt. Ever. And bartenders. Next time you see the people, just sit by him. I'm just going to go sit right. <laughs> I, I'm, I was so fucking high. I was inviting them all to the show and shit. I ain't going to fuck. I know ain't none of those motherfuckers ever going to show up. <laughs> they all going to show up. That, what was the dude's name that was sitting next to him with the beard? Michael. My, dude, that guy was laughing. Like, he and his girl, they were cracking the fuck up. Like, yeah, just, but when, they were... Going. Yeah, they were cracking up, and I would turn my attention to them and try to talk. They would just look at the yeah. table. <laughs> well, yeah, because like, they were like, Jesus Christ, what's he about to say to us? Yeah. <laughs> I was just shitting on the place and the crowd in general, not just them. But. Hi, how's your day going? Yeah, there's really no comeback from that when you're talking about getting raped from your grandpa and wanting a mass shooter to come in and a fucking Muslim and be like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. So you having a good day? Yeah. You can still smell my erection? No. <laughs> no is it there? Damn Jew boy. Yeah. <laughs> that, dude. That uh, yeah, so that cool. intro probably gonna, didn't help you. I thought I, I was going to die, oh. dude. When he goes, oh, that's my erection. I didn't realize everybody could yeah. smell it. Oh, my God. I... I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. And that, like, dude, if you could have seen, Nubsy, if you could have seen this oh lady's God. face. <sighs> never, never has anyone lost someone else so quickly. Ever. <laughs> Ever. In the history There's, of humanity, oh my god, it has ne- no one thought, has ever turned on someone so quickly. I swear to God, you would have thought he pulled out his dick and slapped him in the face with it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was that bad. She literally threw her hands up and was like, "I'm not touching it," and walked away. <laughs> I'm not touching it. <laughs> it's a phantom pain. <laughs> I'm not touching it. <laughs> Oh my god, man. I'm off uh, this one. I knew there was no one in that room that heard that, that I was going to fucking be able to talk to. (laughs) (laughs) It was like, fuck it. At this point in time, if that's the tone for the room, let's roll with it. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Fucking Anne Frank, motherfucker. (laughs) I was was working at Rick 718, and I had to clean the oven one time for the pizzas and shit. And I was like cleaning and scrubbing off the bullshit. It looked like claw marks. I stopped what I was doing and took a picture. I was like, obviously, there's been some Jews in this oven. I sent it to them. (laughs) But it's okay. I'm like, I'm brutal like that. Like, fucking Andy. Like, the other day, I posted a meme, and it's like little cancer patient in front of, uh, uh, like, this little kid. And he's in front of the screen, and Goku's doing the spirit bomb, and the kid's got his hands up. I was like, whoa, buddy, don't give him too much energy, you know? Like... (laughs) And fucking Andy was like, oh, that's a that's a good picture of me as a child. I was like, I didn't realize it was you. Had it been facing me, I would have seen that award-winning smile. I would have known it was you and tagged you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I had to send him a message uh, to messenger after that. I was like, look, man, I'm just as brutal with you as I am with anybody else, man. I don't treat you any differently than I do. Any comedian buddies, if you got a problem with what I got to say, get the fuck over it. <laughs> I got to hold over his motherfucking ass up to fucking Wix and goddamn Louisville. Oh, my God. That's a, that's a heavy motherfucker, dude. He's fucking stout. It's and all got the kind of cock on my fucking shoulder the whole fucking time. <laughs> I was like, dude, man, like, holy fuck. I got to bring his ass up to fucking wicks. I'm asking the people in the group that were going down there to Louva. I'm like, how many steps does it take to get up to this goddamn fucking set? 23. I hope it's less than five. Oh, this motherfucker, one time I'm at sidetracked and I fucking got drunk and I go to get on stage and bust my ass with a beer trying to get on stage, spill my beer everywhere and I get off stage and this motherfucker's like, hey, you mind helping me get to the stage? I'm like, nigga, I can't even get on the fucking stage. What's wrong with you? You don't want to ask me that shit. Oh my God. Oh, and real quick, Torin. Milan, you motherfucking hooked on phonics motherfucking ass, dude. We go to fucking do goddamn trivia and fucking stoners. <laughs> it's my first paid gig ever. And, like, we got six, seven rounds of trivia. And half the questions are fucking, I've never, I can't even put the goddamn sentences to fucking together. So I told Torn, I was like, I'll do this trivia shit. Let me find the questions. Holy fuck. Motherfucker does not know how to make a complete sentence. I'm going to get that motherfucker hooked on phonics for some goddamn fucking... <laughs> birthday fucking christmas something i'm gonna come up with any goddamn excuse to get that motherfucker something <sighs> but yeah life's great you feel better no <laughs> do you feel better no i've not drank all this alcohol so no i'm it's, it's, it's a very sore open wound from last night i will never ever i wish you would have gone to kc's 
I will never <laughs> hang out with Bulldog in public again <laughs> unless I get to pick the fucking place we're going. Because there was a small part of me that was like he was offering him Thunderbolts tickets. I was like, I might go. Fuck, I can get really hot. No, never, ever again. No, I am not going to any white event with you ever See, that's, again. See, that's what you should have gone no. to because then we would have ended up in Lamasco's and you would have seen that fucking steady flow. It's, no. I don't give a shit. I like Steady Flow. They're a cool band, but fuck having to go to a hockey game. <laughs> Could have just get the hockey game and met him at La Masca. Right. Well, I told his ass to come out to La was Monday, but he's like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> I ain't going out to support your comedy career. Who's this motherfucker? People usually don't. Nah, that's usually how it goes. Oh, listen, listen to these motherfuckers. Hey, man, we got a lot of shit coming up, though, man. We got a lot of shit in the works. I have to say, I'm really happy to be like part of the group with this fucking weekend shit I can hit. Like I can do that. Oh, uh, we got this sixteenth torn and core is gonna be at the uh, yeah. simplicity. Yeah. Where is that? You know, Hart's pet store. Old Harps. By is, Bob is Evans. That a furniture store? Yeah. yeah. They're gonna do a comedy show? They have, oh, like, yeah. they, have full, they have like a full stage in there. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> what? It's in yeah. the back or something like that. I ain't been there. I'm gonna go to this one though. Yeah. Then we Let's, can hit the hornet's nest afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <Y'all> can. <laughs> I'm not going to timeout, though. That timeout's too commercial for me. <laughs> too commercial. Too many white people. That's what I mean by too commercial. <sighs> Far too many upper middle class white folk. I like white people who are rich and buy me drinks. That's about it. There's no white bitch in there that wasn't going to buy me drinks at all. Not after Jew Boy got in there. <laughs> you should have rolled with it, man. I've, yeah, how am I going to roll with me? Yeah, my fucking erection smells like weed. Yeah, it's like you want to smell it? Yeah. <laughs> to get that, you high? That That's exactly how you catch a motherfucking charge in a goddamn fucking You already got order. a charge, man. I've Fuck already it. got two or three, True but story. now he's getting distribution. Yeah. 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 Got tra- trafficking. It's, yeah. it's How the fuck are they gonna write that on a goddamn charge? He was trying to get bitches to suck his dick for THC because it smelled like weed. Yeah. That's, I'm, that's a new. That's a whole new fucking Assault felony. With a deadly yeah. weapon. There's, 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 deadly about my four inch. there's a long list. Yeah. There is nothing deadly about my four inches of fury. You I got can tell you that. possession charge. Oh, oh my god. god! Just sprinkle a little fucking crack on the top. Maybe yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I might get like a charge for being a choking hazard, you know, because it's small, but it's only a choking hazard for children, so I don't really want to go that route. Yeah, let's not turn down that page. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's a book nobody wants to read. So. Uh, Especially Torin. Especially Torin. <laughs> Fucking baby DMX. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, when Mike called him that, I fucking died. <laughs> oh, it fits so well. I, I, I appreciate the fact though that he did give us on stage. He gave us. He's like, yeah, y'all give us a lot of shit about me. Me being the whitest motherfuckers, and you know, it's only because I got kids and actually know them all and take care of them. <laughs> yeah, he did shout out. Yeah, the lady there got mad as hell. Yeah, my last set at fucking Jay's, I did a joke about um, sacrificing a baby to the Dark Lord of the Underworld, and like everything yeah. else. Yeah, every once in a while, like, I'll go to, like, a Walmart, and I'll have a Sharpie marker, so, like, you know how they go in the men's room, they got a baby changing stations and shit? Well, I'll write, I'll fucking draw a pentagram, and I'll put <laughs> sacrifice baby to Satan here, <laughs> and I did that shit one time, and they had this white guy walk in, and, like, he went in, like, the big stall and shit, and I was walking out, like, I was kind of washing my hands and shit, and i just done it, and this motherfucker was like, oh, my God! I can't put my baby on this chain on this t- station. <laughs> and he like walks out looking all offended and shit. And like his old lady's out there and he's like, You gotta change the baby. And she's like, Why? Why can't you do it? He's like, I can't let me go take a picture. So I'm sitting out there just like I'm standing around this <laughs> watching goes in, the aftermath. Yeah, this motherfucker goes in and takes a picture. And I hear her fucking cell phone bling or you know, whatever, and she looks down, she's like, Oh my god, who would do that? So I just started dying laughing and <laughs> That walked away. Well, I made that motherfucking joke at Jay's, and apparently this poor little white girl got offended and couldn't get over it because I continued with my set. And she, about two minutes later, she's like, "I can't believe he's talking about babies and sacrificing them." And I was on a bit about you know chloroforming and pumpkin spice. I love this time of year. I put pumpkin spice in my chloroform. They don't even wake up mad. They're like, "Oh, it's zesty and refreshing." <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> and she looked all offended. She's like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna try to like fuck your old lady or none." Her boyfriend sitting next to him. He's like, "No." And I was like, "Okay, whatever." I was like, "I'm not gonna." I was like, "You got a tramp stamp?" You know, I did the tramp stamp. <laughs> I was like, you got a tramp stamp? And she was like, no. I was like, well, damn, that sucks. I love a woo girl with a tramp stamp because that's a woman that is very 
very open about making mistakes and there's a high probability I could be one of those mistakes. And then Mike's old lady at that point in the hornets and this was like, I'm glad I ain't got a tram stamp. <laughs> <laughs> so I look over and I'm like, you can still make mistakes. <laughs> it was never getting laid in that place. <laughs> they got all offended and fucking walked out. And one of the greatest moments I've ever fucking witnessed happened after that. Cause like we all went outside and we smoked <laughs> and me, Torin and Mike are out there and they got this new dude. I can't remember his name. His name is Jacob or something like that. Did a set at Jay's and he ain't met any of us from fucking Adam. And he asked Torin, he's like, Hey man, you got a cigarette? He's like, yeah. He's like, he's talking about like, he, oh, let me, cut back because he walks out the door and the first thing he's talking about is how he's tired of the world anally fisting him and anally fisting his <laughs> life and shit like that <laughs> so I'm like I like this dude all erratically like he, he's next level he asked Torn if he's got a cigarette he's like yeah man I'll give you a dollar for a cigarette he's like you ain't gonna fucking give me a cigarette he's like hands me a cigarette he's like thanks he fucking shakes his hand I was like I wouldn't shake that dude's hand like first and foremost he's talking about like anally fisting and shit and dude just white guy fucking about five foot two out of nowhere reaches into his motherfucking goddamn pocket uh, reaches into his jacket and he's like I'm the Tyrone Biggums I got rocks you know like Dave Chappelle <laughs> talking to Torin <laughs> dead <laughs> I fucking died <laughs> I fucking lost my shit Nah, damn. I <laughs> yeah, damn. It. it broke me. I spent about two minutes outside just laughing my ass off. There's people looking at me through the window. I'm just like, <laughs> oh my god. Then he gets on there and he has a terrible set. But one of his jokes he's talking, <laughs> he's talking about. He just like, went up there and ate dick. Dude, no, he had one good line. He's like, yeah, I got some nieces and nephew and they're quarter Puerto Ricans. I call them my Puerto Ricans. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I love the Evansville comedy scene there are some twisted fucks in this damn place <laughs> that's see that's what I have that's what I've learned having all you fuckers on the show I'm like oh. the Evansville comedy scene is it's gonna be a hard sell yeah it's it's, it's gonna, gonna be a hard sell to move this shit out nationally because <laughs> uh, the crowds are used to specific types of comedians and then they're gonna meet all you fucks and they're gonna be like so uh, like, <laughs> like we got we got the whole what's wrong with you man crew and like we got torn and Corey, and they do kind of like a pg 13 slash r shit and then you got chris izzy which i love because <laughs> chris <laughs> izzy clean as fuck. he's clean as fuck and he does this one bit where he's talking about being at the fucking nursing home and the guy pulls a fucking like an imaginary knife on him and every time he's like whoa you brought an imaginary knife to an imaginary gunfight i sent him a message like dude that's the whitest anybody can ever pull out an imaginary gun don't ever fucking change it you look so fucking white it's great and then you got motherfucking at the ass end of that you got you know like Nubsy and then fucking me and Mike and me and Mike <laughs> as you can tell it should not be allowed in public <laughs> at all the picture of you two alone just on the flyer yeah is... fuck you Izzy for bringing that one up too <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah but props at least getting it was a clone trooper helmet <laughs> See, I didn't, I, I figured, like, because, like, Nubsy photoshopped a picture for the fucking flyer, and it's like, it's a picture of me carrying Andy, but he photoshopped Andy out of it, and it looks like I'm caressing Mike. So I was like, fuck it, we'll just go take that picture in real life, you know? Like, I'll just go fucking do it. And he's like, nah, we're just going to use it on a whole different flyer, because I was doing it because it was going to be like a Valentine's Day thing, you know? He's like, nah, we're just going to go ahead and post this one at the end of the fucking month. It, it literally looks like the most Jimtown Valentine yeah. you could ever see. Yeah, it's fucking Jew boy and a fucking goddamn Leia wig that I got from Goodwill. <laughs> and me with a fucking clone trooper's head that I got from fucking Goodwill. Oh, man. Y'all ain't seen the pictures of us dressing drag to go out there to support the fucking the drag queen story hour. But that story, oh, man. We did so much more damage for those poor little fucking fruits than we ever could have fucking helped. <laughs> Actually, dude, I thought the video that you posted, like, that's the funny thing, knowing your brand of comedy, yeah. and, but the way you conducted yourself when you confronted those people yeah. was, I was just, I was blown away. I was like, dude, he just shut these motherfuckers down. Yeah, see, I Like, just to let everybody know what we're talking about. So, one of our, like, our one of our local <laughs> public libraries here <clears throat> was going to have an event where the they were going to have uh 
drag queens it's drag queen story hour they were gonna have drag queens go to the library and read children's books to kids and evansville is not he is for everyone unless uh, you're not white and christian right it is a it is a very backward ass place but a whole bunch of people were protesting it and blah blah blah. and mcninch shows up and phone in tow recording and he just confronts these people and he's like so what's what's the issue and just basically you in the nicest way possible. Oh, it wasn't nice. Over. It wasn't nice at all. Because I was sitting you, there, I was, like, I was like, what's your convictions? What do you have a problem with this? Yeah, but no, I mean, just the way that you handled yourself, though, like you weren't mean to them. Oh, I was were, mean. Did you not watch the whole video? I was like, why is it okay for fucking Catholics to dress no, up like that's, fucking that's wizards and no, rape children? Uh, <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you weren't mean about it. Like, you weren't aggressive. Like, you were just yeah. asking point blank questions. And dude, that, that lady, she just you Have shut, a great day, sir. She just shut the fuck down you have a great day sir that's all she said yeah. but when i went out there to protest see me and jew boy and his family kind of <clears> went out it was his old lady and a couple of his kids and shit like his son his two and his daughter we should have followed that tactic because we had two fundamental fundamentalist christians kind of confront of us confront us and whew, it went south quick it went bad it was <laughs> like i don't know how to hold my tongue especially against stupidity like that like they're like well this is wrong i was like well what deems it wrong is it my god is like well your god's not real so i don't give a fuck you know like <laughs> i mean just because you follow a fucking book that was written by man doesn't mean i gotta fucking do this shit you know i follow the fucking the 11 satanic rules to of the, the earth. 11 satanic laws of the earth yeah, yeah. that's more that's like way more better than it's the fucking humanitarian yeah, really humanitarian. when you think about it because like, it's, it's it like is. what is this like uh do <clears throat> not like approach a woman unless you receive the mating signal or something yep. like that don't uh, take, do not take anything if a man robs from you you're no. able to like fuck him up no no like that's that. th i'll get like one of them is a do not take anything that does not belong to you unless it is a burden to the other person and they yeah. cry out to be relieved of it uh don't tell other people your problems unless they ask um <clears throat> my favorite uh, yeah there's those two uh when in another's lair treat them with respect if you cannot do so do not go there yeah if someone in your lair treats you with disrespect treat them cruelly and without mercy yep uh, i accidentally turned some people satanists by posting that shit on my fucking facebook do not before. harm do not harm children yep do not harm animals unless attacked or for food uh and then the, the last one's my favorite is uh when uh when traveling abroad just out and about bother no one if someone bothers you ask them politely to stop if they do not stop destroy them <laughs> like Damn. that that's fucking real man it's that's way better than the 10 commandments <laughs> see i went from having 76 friends on my fucking facebook page <laughs> dude like, it's facebook's just out of i just like i was like fuck it i want to get my name out there so i'm just gonna start adding everybody and here i am in february and i've got like 1400 friends and a lot of them are from evansville so you know they're christians so i fucking butt heads with them all the time especially since this goddamn stupid ass shit about this new york abortion law done passed and these motherfuckers cannot take the fucking time to read a goddamn article in fucking full Right. And, like, start posting <clears throat> shit about it. I'm like, you guys are fucking idiots, man. Like, fucking pro-choice all the fucking way. I don't give a shit. That's why I'm trying to talk my old lady into. <laughs> I know. Pro-choice. I know. I know some people in, like, the 397th <laughs> trimester that should be aborted. Dude, oh. I know motherfuckers right now that should be aborted. Like, That's you, what I'm saying. You should be aborted for <laughs> bringing me that motherfucking place. <laughs> I should abort myself for going. <laughs> I wanted a gun so I could self-abort last night. I give a fuck. Did you hear about that asshole? Like, suing his parents because they didn't get <laughs> ask to have board. Board. <laughs> like, dude, like, I love the dude's gonna there's lose. Two, there's two of them now. <laughs> Are you serious? There's two. <laughs> I know the dude's gonna lose. <laughs> Did you hear about this nubsy? Props. Uh -uh. <laughs> this dude is suing his parents because he did not ask to be. Oh born. yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and both uh, of his parents Tucker are fucking lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's gonna be horrible for you. I literally think that's just a publicity stunt. I don't give a shit, but it's a great one. <laughs> it's, it's a great so headline. Fucking, it's a great one. That that's how fucking retarded our society is now yeah like they're dumbing themselves down to that to get publicity like go it's fuck yourself literally we're 10 years away from welcome to like, costco like i love you like literally <laughs> go abort yourself like we were just talking about the it'll dude, be over that's the your, next your choice. The, 
actually uh, we'll say we'll say 20 years the next generation coming is welcome to costco I love you. Dude, <laughs> fucking Jesus. I remember watching <laughs> Idiocracy Nation. when it came out back in like 2009. I'm like, this movie's fucking stupid. It's it 2019. I'm like, this movie's a fucking documentary. Yeah. Where the fuck we're going? Yeah. Yeah, Mike Judge even said, he goes, I, I never had any intention for this to become I a, think a he's full of shit. I think he's a... Um, He's like Matt Grinning from The Simpsons. He's yeah. a fucking time traveler he's and he's traveler. trying to warn us of shit. Because oh. there's way too much shit that he's gotten right. <laughs> yeah. In the same time frame. Yeah. Mike, Mike Grinning. It's actually been correct. Like, fuck. Dude, Matt Grinning, there's, there's <laughs> something going on with him. I think Judge is the same way, though. Yeah. Ow, fuck. I just read all the Satan rules pretty interesting yeah, yeah. I yeah. Pull them up. they're pretty fucking like they're way better than the Ten Commandments I can't see yeah, I think and aside from the 11 satan- the satanic rules satanic. of the earth, uh, you have the nine satanic statements like uh, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence yeah. Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams uh, Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires <laughs> Satan represents... I like that vampire thing. Uh, yeah. Well, psychic vampires, man. Like, people around you that drain you of your energy. Yeah. Uh, Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. That, for me, is a huge one. That ties into the whole... How a lot of people have this misconception that blood makes family. Not at all. Dude, yeah, no. I've seen the shit going on on your Facebook. Fuck with that shit. family, dude. Dude family like for me blood doesn't mean shit like you i have built my family yeah like I, of course i've got my dad and my stepmom i've got a few cousins that i stay in contact i got with. my mother and the rest of it is fuck psyche y'all yeah. my fucking family but i'm yeah. not sure i have y'all in my fucking family because like i had a big ass face do- book debate because my car got towed right you know it was I my, saw fucking, that. It was in my I was uncle's like, name whoa and my uncle died, so all I needed from my fucking family in Mississippi was a goddamn death, death certificate. Death certificate. That was fucking it. Yeah. And like, I had one of my cousins get on there and start some shit, and I, I was like, I know some fucking family secrets. Don't make me fucking air them out. And she's like, I'd like to know what family secrets you got. So I talked about one of our cousins getting drunk and raping his fucking brothers. Real shit, man. Yep. He raped his fucking brother, and she immediately disassociates herself. I was like, well, that's not my part of the family. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I hope any of you Verascas, Ludwigs, or Lamberts are listening to this shit. You can all eat the fucking largest cock and choke on it and go to fucking hell. Like, I really hope hell is real just so the motherfuckers, I can see them down there. But ha ha, bitch. <laughs> so I can see them down. I know where I'm going. Oh, I don't want to go to heaven anyway. Ain't none of my friends going to be there. You think Mike's going to be in heaven? No. Nah. It's the new age Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> Like my family wants to pretend like we're not fucked up. They want to pretend like, you know, everything's cool. And let, let, let's sweep everything under the rug. But it's like, nah, I've been getting raped since I was two and molested. So, nah, fuck y'all. There's some real shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> this yeah, is dude. the game of the Burka Loungers. <laughs> I talked about being... <laughs> Oh uh, man, I talked about being raped at Lamasco and shit like that. It was like that's a different kind of crowd. I'd never been to Lamasco before, <laughs> and like I had one dude in the middle of my set, man. Like it fucking, I grew, I loved it, cause he was like fucking, I love this motherfucking guy, and I was like, I love you too, random stranger. And then I had some fucking black gay guy who was very intently like staring at me, like hit on me mid set, and I was like, I was like. I love gay people. I love getting hit on by gay guys because it lets me know this whole straight thing doesn't work out. I got options, you know. But I was like, I'm about to ruin your motherfucking dream because my might look beautiful. I got a tiny dick. You know? <laughs> so I don't give a fuck, man. It's like, I look, I found it a lot easier to joke about and talking about having a tiny dick and it's a lot easier to recover because if I pull it out and she's like, well, it's not that small. It's a lot better than like fucking talking about having a big dick and then like pull it out. She's like, well, it's not that big. It's a lot easier to recover from. Uh, it's not that small. <laughs> like, yeah. I can recover from that. He has a point. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot easier to go about your shit that way. I like to keep expectations Low. in the realm of truth. Yeah. <laughs> like, Feels good on the pride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Huh, I thought it was small. It was, huh. huh. Well, look at that there. You made me think it was one. Oh. I thought it would be like two bless, inches. No, bless your four. heart. No, four or five. <laughs> yeah, I've actually got that one before. So, oh, bless your heart. Oh, I can't fuck now. Yeah, like, right? My fucking dick <clears throat> fucking went shriveled. I would have been like, damn. 
harsh. Like the <laughs> the chick I'm with now, like is my my. I don't like baby mama, so I use crib midget mama. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I have her saved as. Strawberry's gonna love that you said crib midgets. Yeah, okay. and an, another one that she's that she loves is crotch goblins. Yeah, that's what that's what my that's what the chick uses. She uses crotch goblins. So I, I want to. I told her I was like I want to. I was like I want to name our kid Lister Fiend. <laughs> Clerics too, Kevin Smith. I love, love it. it, yeah. But nah, man, like I told her, I was like, my Let's one issue me. with you is like you, like you up pillow pants. Yeah, pillow <laughs> pants. I was like, you upsell my cock too much. Like you fucking getting on there talking about how I'm good at sex. It's like I know it's not doing that much damage. Calm the fuck down. Like you ain't got to fucking. I know it ain't that good. I'm my own worst oh, enemy fuck. when it comes to that shit. All right, nubs. What's up? We didn't do a nubsy flow last week. We didn't, and the world wept. Yeah. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yep. What you got for us? Well, I got some. Yeah. Bring it up, David. Tell. Look, we, 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 we got you, Baka's we asshole. Know, we know it's <laughs> <laughs> there, we know. there ain't nothing that could be more detrimental or offensive, <laughs> offensive to me than last night. So you're good. <laughs> All right, say whatever you got to say. It's already done. I love it when people like approach me or something like, "Oh yeah, bitch tits." I was like, "Yeah, I've never fucking heard that in my bitch 32 tits. years of fucking years of existence." <laughs> I was in motherfucking goddamn like the fucking the theater one time here, and some dude just randomly walking by with his old lady. I'm fucking 32 years old. You wouldn't think I have to deal with this fucking shit. And she's like, "Look at this fat fuck." I was like, "What?" what? I was like, "Don't be jealous just because my fucking tits are bigger than yours, bitch." And his old <laughs> like, her old man started laughing. I was like, "He ain't getting no pussy." Yeah, he definitely. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm a fucking comedian, and I went through high school and middle school as a fat ass nerd with a tiny dick. If you don't think I got comebacks, get ready. I got him. <laughs> got him. Got him. I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> yeah, you know he's gonna fuck with this for like five minutes to get the his audio oh, port to work. <clears throat> Nubsy, go get a phone. I got a phone. Go get another phone and sell me yours. <laughs> It's not, not working. working. <laughs> like this. Like that. I just you send it to you. You gotta wiggle it a little bit, Nubs. You gotta wiggle it. <laughs> wiggle it. Just a little. Have you seen the meme where it's talking about how like my ex girlfriend or like my ex, the oh, fucking thing talking about? He's got that Trump pussy, no walls. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? I don't even know. Baby powder balls. That way, might get some head tonight. Leave it right there. Shotty looking like she ain't in it at all. Eyes like she dead inside. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I was at the convenience store. Yo. <laughs> I, was just, I can't find it. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on, but it's great. It's the greatest Nubsy flow ever. How do you fuck up your own corner? I don't know if I can find it. Just do it that way. Just hold it up to Mike. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, the fucking ball return jammed up. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact you do this shit in the it's goddamn <laughs> fucking bully alley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there's that. Have any of your coworkers ever just like walked by you while you're doing these? No, but they. Uh, I think somebody said, "Were well, you talking to yourself over there?" <laughs> I'm like, "Nah, they were spitting bars." <laughs> like for what? Well, if I told you, you wouldn't listen to it. So I don't really care. <laughs> But they taught me talking to myself through the phone. But uh, all right, people, we're gonna cut this one just a few minutes short. We gotta get the fuck out of here. This is the Bulldog on J podcast. I'm your host, King of Villas Bulldog Malingo, along with Tucker, yep. DJ Secureta. Yep. Nubs they slow. Jim Boy Boy and Josh McNinch. Thanks for coming in again, man. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>
I love you. Unfollow this goddamn shit. <laughs> you want to go to the Hornets Nest next week? No. Weekend? I'd rather fucking take my grandpa's cock. <laughs> over and over. We'll be back next week. Skill a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Later.